Oh, child, we gonna die today. Gonna die today. I'm gonna have people hate me today. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. It's a new video and as you can tell this one is a little bit of a serious one So I wanted to keep it clean keep it fresh uh, Not too much in terms of a lot going on I really wanted us to sit and have a chat about this because I see this trending everywhere I see it being a conversation on talk shows. I see it being a conversation on talk sh radio shows. Um, I see it being a conversation on social media. It's being spoken about everywhere. Now, two weeks ago, today, uh, as I'm filming this video right now, I put up a um, Instagram poll kind of thing. And I said, would you guys like to see a video where we talk about toxic family members? Because I feel like toxic friendships toxic work relationships toxic relationships we can talk about that kind of stuff all day every day until we're blue in the face but one thing that is starting to trend right now is people are becoming more vocal and more outward and upfront about toxic family members and being around or being in a dysfunctional family where there's just a whole lot of to toxicity within the family so I put up an Instagram poll and I said, would you guys like us to do a video about this? Do you want to share your experiences? Um, obviously, with the sensitivity of this topic, I'm not going to divulge people's names. And again, with the sensitivity of this topic, I am not going to give my personal accounts of what happens in my family uh, because I know a lot of uh, extended family members, friends from childhood, friends from work, colleagues, whatever, watch my channel. So for that, I'm not uh, going to do that. I will, however, talk about instances of, you know, what's been said to me or give an example, not really divulging who said what or whatever, but um, how I reacted to that or how I saw that as a form of toxicity. Before I get into your stories, I am um, going to just talk about what a toxic family is um, based on my understanding of what a toxic family is and then we can get into sharing one another's stories. Let's get into it. This is a serious one. I know that intro was a lot, but this is a serious um, uh, topic. So let's get into the video. So for me, in the literal sense, toxicity or a toxic family member is just essentially somebody within the constructs of your family in terms of DNA, in terms of genetic heritage background and all of that. This is somebody who um, just doesn't really quite have the same understanding or concept of love as you do and in turn would be somebody who would... Um, you know, make fun of you, say bad things about you, um, talk badly about your accomplishments, the life that you are living, what you have. Um, also somebody that just attacks you spiritually, mentally. Somebody who attacks your emotional state of mind more than anything, uh, which in turn leads to you having mental health struggles. This is a toxic family member to me. So somebody who just never really has anything positive to say. This can be somebody who can say something nice. Oh my goodness, your t-shirt is nice, but it's looking kind of faded, right? Or, oh my goodness, why are you cutting? Like, I can tell you about family members who have mentioned the fact that my haircut makes me look like a boy. I can tell you that right now. Like, it's somebody who just really never has anything positive to say. Why would you go and buy a car like this? Why would you do this, this, this? They always have something negative to say. Different types of family members. This can come from cousins, aunties, uncles, any kind, any kind of person within the constructs of what we deem as family. Now, this is a really, really sensitive topic. And I feel like it is a very, very sensitive topic for so many people. So we're going to uh, glaze upon it without going too deep into it. For the sake of, one, I am not a doctor. I am not a psychotherapist. I am not a, a, a therapist. I am not a psychiatrist. I am nothing of the sorts. And I'm not going to sit here and give you advice. 
uh, as to what you can do or what you can no what i'm gonna do is share experiences and state that this is a real thing this is what we have all gone through um uh, it, some more than others some maybe don't go through it and if they don't they are very very lucky uh, but a lot of us have very similar and shared experiences when it comes to toxic family members. For me, I feel like all families have some sort of dysfunction. It doesn't necessarily mean that people be crazy in the family, but they're people who act kind of crazy and act kind of wild. And um, for me growing up, I grew up, I'm so sorry about this, I grew up in a very, very strong family. And I'm talking not only about my immediate family, the people that are around me, but I'm talking about even my extended family, my aunts, my cousins. We are relatively a family of very strong people, very strong minded people, people who just say what they want to say, irrespective of what the consequences may be, irrespective of whether you may be hurting the other person or not. And also a family where apologies are really hard to come by in, 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 the most truest and honest sense. Apologies are really, really difficult. Even for me growing up, and I feel like my sister can attest to this, I was terrible at apologizing. I just didn't. And even when I knew, or may have not known, as, as like overtly, co covertly, overtly, even when I knew outright, or if I may have said something snide or or maybe made a comment that was really just hurtful i wouldn't apologize i would say something else to sort of cover up for my attempting to rectify the situation so i come from a family of very very strong individuals and these individuals say whatever do whatever you know and um some of them don't say the nicest things some of them are not considerate of what they say some of them actually just say really downright hurtful things or do hurtful things now with a dysfunctional family i feel like it's so easy for us to let go of a dysfunctional friendship it's so easy to let go of a dysfunctional relationship but because with a family we feel like we are so bound by genetic heritage by the fact that these are the people that you grew up around these are the people that um you know you we deem and call family based on societal norms and structures because at my age right now i feel like i can even call some of my friends family so it's not only those people it's not only those people um but with family it's always hard to let go it's always hard to say you know what i can't do this anymore this is not good for my energy this is not good for my space and because of that i am gonna distance myself from these people because there is an element of you you feel kind of bad you feel bad at the fact that ah oh man i this this woman my auntie my mother my father whatever you know um I grew up with them and and they put me through school and they they fed me and they clothed me and whatever but for me that shouldn't be if someone's definition of love love is clothing you or feeding you or um taking you to school while they can in the same token treat you badly and emotionally not be invested in you then i don't necessarily see that as a form of love you are literally just clothing me somebody who doesn't love me per se can clothe me or feed me or take me to school anybody can clothe me or feed me or take me to school but now if you are not reciprocating the same energy in terms of love and loving one another in terms of we also respect each other in terms of what we say in terms of my goodness uh, loving one another in terms of we also respect one another we respect what we say to each other how we behave um, and what we say when we're not around when the other person is not around that if we can respect a person like that that is something that i will deem as a healthy relationship but in many toxic dysfunctional families man you can sit here and laugh with your auntie today and your auntie can leave tomorrow and talk about what a horrible human being you are this is what i'm talking about when i talk about toxic dysfunctional families they can leave and talk 
crap about you behind your back if not it's people who manipulate a certain situation it's people who know how how kind you are or they know that you're an empath like for me one of my biggest struggles with my family is that well earlier on not now because now i'm grown okay uh one of my biggest struggles with my family is the fact that i would hate that my family would constantly say you're sensitive like they would say something mean to me someone from my family would say something horrible to me or do something horrible to me like throw me under the bus or manipulate the situation so that it benefits them and then I end up looking like the baddie at the end of the day and then when I say that I didn't like what you did the immediate response that I'll get is ah man hey you're no sensitive man hey it wasn't a big deal whatever they are invalidating who I am as a person. I am an empath. I feel bad for other people. Uh, I feel bad for other people. I care for other people so much that I want to help all the time. I want to, if I can, I want to, even if I have my last hundred rand and I want to help someone from my family, I will help them, you know? And you'll have other members of my family like, what are you, why are you doing that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I said this. So why are you being so sensitive? Blah, blah, blah. And they invalidated who I am. And initially, I didn't really get that. I would just be made to feel bad for caring or to feel bad for the fact that you really said something horrible and you hurt me. I was made to feel bad just by somebody saying, see, son, in another class, yeah, just by somebody saying, I'm an, you're being sensitive. Then you have extended members of the family who will say a whole lot of things about you. My sister and I have been, we've gone through a lot with certain members of our family who've said horrible things about us. And it got back to us and we found out and it sucks because at this point, you are the kid in this situation. Now you need to come back and be respectful to somebody respectful because that's how we grew up, right? So you have to come back and be respectful to somebody who called you trash or somebody who said you would like such crazy explicit words and 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 horrible things about you but now you need to come back and up and 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 just be like you know what let me just I, I just need to be respectful when you see them at family gatherings when you see them out and about or whatever you still need to be respectful to somebody who trashed you and it's really 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 hard to make peace with the fact that why do I need to I mean when you get older when you start working, I'm actually burning up, guys, because I just got back from the gym. <sighs> when you get older, when you start working, it's easy for you to distance yourself from your family. It really is, is in terms of, you know, you're working, you've got your own life, you started your own thing. That's fine. You don't, if there's family occasions and you don't want to go, you don't go. It's that easy, you know. But when you're a child, it's a very hard situation to get out of because where are you going to go? You don't have money. These people are clothing you. They're schooling you. They're feeding you. They're this, this, this. But they kind of just don't care about your emotional state. That's why they say whatever and do whatever, irrespective of how it may make you feel at the end of the day. But where are you going to go when you're a child? I get that. But when you're grown, it's very, 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 very easy in the literal sense to distance yourself but emotionally it is quite difficult and now you're stuck with these family members who you know they don't like you you know they don't like you but at the end of the day you're just like but they're my family but they're my family are they somebody who loves you doesn't manipulate you somebody who loves you doesn't make you feel bad for who you are or what you have or make comments about you in the sense that, I mean, I've had family members who have said, who have, you know, it's come back to me that they've said, um, 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 why isn't she having any kids? She probably can't have any. You know that kind of thing? Why isn't she married? You know, it's always the snickering, the snickering, and the saying the horrible things, and all oh, those kids, all oh, those kids are so spoiled, and this and this and this, and uh, uh, um, yeah, they're probably running the streets with boys, and things like that. And these things would be said about me and my sister, and it would be intense, because it would be coming from family members. So now you are sitting here, and you're like, wow. Wow. 
How do you walk away from people who do this? It's simple. In my, not as a professional, not as somebody who is, uh, who has gone to school for this kind of thing. In my way, in my little way, what has helped me is to not participate. I sit in my house. They can be family functions. They can be it can be like all sorts of weddings, funerals, like family functions, all of that, where everybody's coming together. If I don't want to go, I don't. Because it is because of these, fa these, these, these certain family members and the growing up structures that I come from, that I struggle from anxiety today. And now because of that's one of the things, but it's one of the major things, right? So because of that, one of the things that I've learned in therapy is dissociate yourself, move. Don't go if you don't want to go. And if they don't understand, that's their, that's their problem. You don't need to explain anything about what you're doing to uh, your family members. If you don't want to go, if you know that you're going to go and you're going to come back feeling crappy about yourself and about your life, why are you going? Why? Why are you going? So for me, the one thing that's really, really helped is to distance myself. And when I mean distance myself, I mean in terms of proximity, don't go to the family functions. Don't go if, you, if I don't feel like going home today because I feel like if mentally I am not okay, I'm not going to go. But it's not only proximity. Don't talk to them. It's the family members that will come and borrow money from you. The only time they come is when they want money. It's the family members that will manipulate a situation so that it benefits them. It's the family members that throw you under the bus, that share something that you've shared with them in person, in private. And then they're going to go and share it with other family members. And sometimes it's something that you said about a particular family member, like, you know what, I didn't like it that this person said this, this hurt me. And then that very same family member you're telling is going to go tell that person that hurt you. Like, yeah, that one was complaining that you were hurting them. Like, where, how, how, when you don't even feel a sense of safety with your family members, I, I feel like I'm ranting, this video is all over the place, I'm sorry, but when you don't even feel a sense of safety with your family members or being around your family members, and I mean not only physical safety, but emotional safety, because if people are going to be abusive to you in whatever way, physically, emotionally, mentally, they got to go, period, point blank. And sometimes you can't physically remove yourself from that situation. That's cool. But you can mentally check out and you can choose as a grown-up. As a kid, you can't really choose. It's really difficult to do so. But as a grown-up, you can choose and say, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I'm not coming to this party. This here party, this here me dealing with you today, no. There's certain family members of, of mine that literally it's always a hi, bye. It's always, oh, hello, how you doing? There's no communication on WhatsApp. There's no nothing, nothing, nothing. There's nothing. And I know that that works for me because it keeps me and my mental health in check. Because the moment I start talking to that person, all the things that I've been thinking about, that I heard, that they've said about me, whatever, I'm grown now. They, they're sitting in here. And I know that uh, I might not be able to control myself at some point, I'll blow. But now at the same time, I need to respect my elders because that's how I was taught. So the only thing I can do is stay uh, away. I don't know. Um, sometimes it is, it's, 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 you shouldn't be made to feel, how, how long have I been talking? 20 minutes. You shouldn't be made to feel bad. You shouldn't be made to feel bad for choosing you. For choosing your mental health. For choosing your mental space. You shouldn't be made to feel bad for being an empath. You shouldn't be made to feel bad for, for, for uh, uh, um, uh, choosing to care about others. You shouldn't be manipulated by people who are meant to care for you. You shouldn't be talked about by people who you assist and you help. You shouldn't be, you know, I, I used to find myself in very... I, my, not all my family members, but a lot of my family members come to me to talk to me about their problems. And I don't mind that 
because I'm a good listener. I don't mind that. I don't know in terms of about how I advise. If they say I'm great at advising, great, cool. They come to me to talk to me about their problems. But for the longest time, aside from my sister, aside from Naledi, and Naledi, of course, as well, there's certain things that I share with her and there's certain things that I won't share with her because I just won't. But a lot of the time, even if I do want to talk about partners or, or work stress or even family member stress or whatever, I will talk to my sister. However, it's been really hard for me to find other outlets within my family members to speak and speak my mind and speak my heart and speak my truth and speak my peace and share with somebody who might potentially advise me what's going on in my life. It's been extremely hard. And I've gotten to a point where I just don't do it anymore. That's why I'm seeing a therapist. I'll either talk to my sister or that's about it. I don't share anything else with anyone. You know, so um, sometimes... It sucks to be made to feel bad for wanting people who will emotionally protect your heart and your mental space. Why should you be made to feel bad? Especially if it's your family members. All right, let's share some of your stories. I've got, for the first time in my life, I have gotten so many responses. I was, phew, phew. Now, this video is on 24 minutes right now. Haven't edited it. This video is going to be in two parts. So it will be the first part, which is this one now. And then we're going to get into the questions and the, and the statements and people sharing their stories, obviously all anonymous. And the part two will continue into the next video. So shall we get into it? Like this one lady says, maternal family, they know how to gaslight. I, I, I wouldn't know. Um, for me, it's this is not. It's just a statement, so it's not really something I can officially um, uh, react to. But if I'm going to think about my mother's maternal family, they, my mother's maternal family, my maternal family. Yes, there are members in my maternal family who gaslight quite a bit or make me feel bad at the fact that I don't particularly attend my mother's side of the family's functions and all of that as much as I do on my father's side purely because after my mother passed away all of them just kind of did this except for one or two members of my mother's family right so all of them just kind of like they were like okay the matriarch is gone we ain't we ain't gotta care about these little two kids me and my sister so based on that I just kept contact with the ones who kept contact with me. The ones who cared to speak to me and that was it. But then of course I would always hear that, oh, you know, they would say things to the ones that I do speak to like, oh, so yeah, uh, Gabby's kids don't even come to family funerals. They don't come to whatever. No one tells us except the one or two people we do talk to or they have negative things to say. So I've literally distanced myself from my mother's side of the family I speak to them when they speak to me, that's it. But to make chummy buddies, no. No, no, no. no. Elderly members, that's their take on frustration on you, like use you as a punching bag. When they're stressed, they ri ridicule you for the smallest things. Yes, I've had a family member, I'm not going to say whether it's a man or a woman, but I've had a family member who made me feel bad because she had finished her cup of tea and I came to clear the table and then all she said to me was how did I tell you I was finished there was no tea in the cup nothing and I was clearing the table for everybody but she went off at me and she never ever apologized because they don't so yes elderly family members yes my parents once opened a case against me, this is someone else, my parents once opened a case against me when they thought I was stealing groceries, stealing and selling groceries. My mother made me sign a contract that states that if anything happens to me, it's my fault. Your mother. Like some of these stories that I read, guys, are really, really painful, like this one right now. How does your parent make you sign a contract that says if anything happens to you, it's your fault? 
Hey cat, it's one of the hardest things in life, especially when it's a mother, when the world revolves around, well, when the world reveres mothers. It's so sensitive and super lonely. I can only tell my sister about it after 32 years existence because she finally sees us. Yes, yes, because people feel that mothers are never wrong. My mother, I would have major, major confrontations with my mother before she passed. And my mom was hard to apologize. She would never apologize. She would say some things. My sister knows this because I've spoken to my sister about it. My sister was young at the time. So, and my sister was, was the apple of my mother's eye. My sister was the egg with my mom, you know? And, and I was, I'm, I ain't got no problem with that. But all I'm saying is that um, I would have very heated confrontations with my mother. And my mother would say really horrible things to me. And she wouldn't, sometimes she would apologize. Sometimes she wouldn't. And in fact, her apology, which I feel like with most parents, with a lot of parents, they do this with their kids when they've hurt their kids. Her apology was to... Stopped recording. But basically, I was saying that my mother, her way of apologizing, her apology would be maybe to cook me a nice meal or to um, uh, do something nice for me, but never to officially say, I'm sorry. And a lot of the time, that's what we need to hear. Um, and I do feel that a lot of parents, uh, uh, um, instead of actually saying sorry, they'll do something nice for you, or they'll say, or they'll do whatever, when all you want as a child who has been hurt by their parent is to just hear your parents say, Okay, tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what I said wrong. Um, then they hear it, and then they say, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. Ding, ding, ding. First point of call. First, first point of call. I didn't mean to make you feel that way. I apologize. I apologize. That's all we need. Black parents struggle to do this. Really, a lot.